In this demonstration, I'll be showing you how to work with gradients. I'm going to start just by creating a shape and then we'll paint it because a gradient is a paint fill basically. So I'm going to go over to my rectangle tool. And the default right now, I see I have it as a red fill and a black stroke, which I'll leave. And I see the stroke is set to 4, which is also fine. I'm just going to draw a rectangle here. Actually, I'll hold my shift key down, make it a perfect square. And what we want to do is we want to paint that fill with a gradient. I'm going to go over and just select the fill and then go over to my color palette. And it's here that we can convert to gradients. Once the color palette is open and you do have it selected, you want to make sure you're on the fill and not the stroke area. Now you will go to the pull down menu and this is where you'll establish your gradient. We have two to choose from. We have linear and radial. I'll start with linear and it'll start with some default and let me explain how this works basically this little grid down here has these markers underneath they establish the color so you can see on the left it, it starts as black where on the right it goes to white if I select that particular marker I can go in here and change the colors and you'll see it live on the stage and I can also choose the hue and change that to whatever and the tone Okay, so there's the one ramp. So if I want to change the other color on the other side, I click on that marker and again just choose my colors here. So whatever I want to do, there we go. Okay, so that's the basics. Now, let's say I want to have more than one color. I can actually generate a marker by simply going below and you can see how it looks like a little plus sign. As long as I see the plus sign, I can click and it generates a marker and then I can click that marker and actually establish a whole new color for it as you can see there and I can move these around I can drag them to change the bias of the ramp and you'll see it appear live on your selected element on the stage now if I want to delete one of these markers you simply click it and drag it down so just click and drag downwards and boom it's gone so if I want to reinitiate one here I start over by clicking establish my new color and we're back to generating colors and ramps okay so that's the basics on how to create the colors and the bias of the colors or the rainbow effect if you will I can go in and I can add as many as I want really whatever seems reasonable and then just pick and choose these colors or the tones whatever the case may be and if I want to delete, I drag downwards. Okay, so that's how we establish the colors. And again, this is a linear gradient. You can actually see flow here as well. There are different choices. But I'm going to keep it on this first one, extend color. And show you how I can control this even further. Because we also have what's called a gradient tool. Alright, so we establish colors in our color palette. But we actually have a tool to gain more control, and this is where it gets even more cool. It's nested with the free transform tool. So gradient transform tool. Now you can see some little handles appeared. This one is for stretching and shrinking that gradient. So it gives you even more control over that and you can go beyond as you can see there where it actually hardly appears as a gradient or it can go tighter. Okay, I'm going to make it a little tighter. This top one is for rotation and when you get close you'll see the cursor change and you can actually change the angle of that ramp. So I can go in here and start to stretch and shrink, rotate and then this one which I think is quite cool is the middle dot. It actually lets you drag the whole thing around so you can get really into some nice airbrushing features with this amount of control. You can see how I can just kind of bias it up to the corner there if I want. Just drag it all around. Okay, so there are the three main controls on the linear gradient using the gradient tool. I'm going to go back to my color palette. Actually, you know what, let me create a second shape here. I'll just leave that one alone. I'll go back to my selection tool, click away, and let's create a second shape. I'm going to use the oval tool. I uh, will go to my colors here and just choose a solid color to start and draw a circle. 
So I'll hold my shift key down, make it a perfect skirt circle. Then with my selection tool, select the center, select the fill, go over to my colors, establish what's called a radial gradient. And again, it will basically apply, I think, the last used gradient that you were working on. So I'm going to just drag this down here. And you can see this is the center. So if I want to have this looking like a ball hit by light, this needs to be lighter than that. So with that swatch selected, let me go to a light color here. And then with this swatch selected, let me go to a darker color. And there you can see it looks like a little more 3D, a little more sphere-like. And of course I can introduce all kinds of colors and get away from that concept altogether. And in here, let's say I want to make it quite bright and red. I think you get the idea here. I'm going to make this yellow, and bright, and so on. So let's now go over to our tool, our gradient transform tool, and see what we have in here. We actually have an extra button if you will but you can kind of distort this you know you can make it an oval I can rotate that oval as well right here but I also can actually just shrink the whole thing or expand it with this tool as well so and then the center dot of course Let's move it around. There's one more cool feature on the center dot area, which is this little triangle, which does this bias thing. And you're just going to have to play with that, but it actually does this very cool sort of slingshot bias, as you can see there. So my suggestion is go in and play with these tools, get quite familiar with the, how we can distort and control these colors, but I think it's pretty cool. And there are the controls for using the radial gradient, if you will. All right. So again, I can rotate it. I can kind of grab this, stretch it out again, grab that triangle and take it back and kind of normalize it, if you will. And move the whole thing down. But you get the idea here. We actually can shrink and reduce and rotate. Okay, so that's the gradient transform tool working on a radial gradient and really that's sort of the roundhouse uh, lesson on working with gradients inside of Adobe Animate. Okay so the main thing is you work with it inside of your color palette in conjunction with the gradient transform tool and that is our lesson on gradients for today.